Hey everyone, this is Brad from the iBuyPower product team. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new CPU from Intel, the 9990XE. If you haven't heard of this CPU before, uh, that's not surprising. Intel didn't really do a lot of marketing behind it, and you can't even really buy one. Um, it is only available at a secret auction that uh, Intel invited us to participate in a few months back. Uh, for a special ultra high-end CPU. Uh, it would be similar in concept to the 8086K of last year, a uh, super binned and factory overclocked version of an existing product, in this case the 9940X, their 14 core uh, X processor. So this one's ours. Uh, we paid about $2,200 at the auction for it. Uh, that's about $200 more than Intel's current top dog CPU, the 9980. XE, um, and this one's called the 9990, so it's, it's 10 better, uh, compared to the 9980XE, which has 18 cores, a 3 gigahertz base clock, and can reach 4.5 gigahertz in turbo. Uh, this only has 14 cores, but a 4 gigahertz base clock, and can reach 5.1 gigahertz uh, in turbo. Uh, in terms of all core turbo, uh, the 9980XE will hit somewhere between 3.8 and 4 low fours uh, with depending on which motherboard you're using um, this thing supposedly can run at 5 gigahertz all day long on 14 cores so in theory in terms of raw performance it should beat out the 9980xe so that's all well and good um, but you know well, who is this for why does this exist why did Intel make it and why did they not tell anyone about it you know we asked them that question and they said well it's for the financial world uh, I guess this is a result of a request from banks and traders uh, that need something with unbelievably high core speed, but also a lot of cores to execute financial transactions and trades. Um, you know, these guys are in an industry where time is literally money and you know, a couple hundred or a couple thousand extra dollars to make that transaction before somebody else is just a drop in the bucket and totally worth it for them. You know, what about us? What about what about gamers? What about content creators? You know, how, how would something like this fare for us? Um, in theory, you know, this should be the best at both worlds. It has an incredibly high uh, turbo frequency, as high or almost as high as the 9900K, which is widely considered to be the best gaming CPU, best. So our prediction uh, is that this will actually be able to beat both the 9980XE and the 9900K in all tasks, making this the best CPU ever, but there's not a lot out there as far as gaming. I know not a lot of people are buying this as a gaming CPU, but that doesn't mean people won't game on it. So how does it do in gaming? And that's what we're gonna find out today, putting it through a few benchmarks to see how it does both in some content creation tasks and in gaming. For that, we've assembled this rig here. Uh, we've got an ultra high-end X299 motherboard, 32 gigs of DDR4, a nice 360 millimeter cooler to keep the CPU cool, and an RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, we're gonna be using this as our platform for testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this processor into this machine, um, and we'll see how they compare to each other. And then I need to change the processor. <laughs> Sixty cooler might not be enough. Uh, well, that didn't go as planned. Two days since that last take. Um, what happened was we ran into uh, some issues running Cinebench. The 9980 XC posted a score of about 3,770. So we were looking to, you know, get about that same score with the 9990 in terms of core count and clock speed. But we kept getting scores in the 1800 to 1900 range. So we went back, we checked out some bio settings, changed memory, changed cooler, uh, you know, tried a bunch of different things, uh, but uh, we kept running into the same issue where uh, either the board was limiting us with power, the CPU and Cinebench loads takes uh, at stock settings 
about 450 watts just to the CPU um, compared to the 9980XE, which sits somewhere around 275. We we're hitting thermal throttle and power throttling limits uh, on the board. So we did some tweaking with voltages. We dropped the core voltage down a little bit. We turned off some of the board's overclocking features, uh, you know, locked the frequency and all this stuff was kind of, you know, things you don't normally expect to have to do. But anywhere, anywhere above uh, mid 300 watt range, um, and the, the liquid can't even take the, the heat out of the block fast enough to get it to the radiator. The Cinebench benchmark runs for about five seconds uh, with a CPU this powerful, and within three seconds, uh, we're already hitting our um, max package temperature. One thing we haven't tried yet is, you know, Intel does have a list of boards that are approved or have been certified for this uh, for this CPU. What we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna change this board out to uh, another board, the ASRock uh, X299i9XE, uh, which claims to be able to deliver 1300 watts to the CPU. We'll see what happens after that. I hope it'll help. Got no other ideas. Um, it's using way too much power. Uh, it, I mean, this isn't like a long-term solution by any means, but I'd like to get a score to say like, you know, in theory, if you could pull it at, you know, five gigahertz, this is what it would do. I didn't want to build a custom loop. Okay, so, uh, Here's our best case scenario. Some amount of voltage tuning, figured out what about the lowest power we can send to the CPU and still get a stable run through Cinebench. Have our radiator dunked in an ice bucket. Go ahead and run Cinebench and you know, hopefully we can get it an entire run through without any thermal throttling and you know, maybe beat that 9980. Got my screwdriver here. All right. Uh, so score to beat here, 3777. That's with the 9980XE for the best. So no thermal throttling yet. Oh my god. 3770. I mean it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's matching the uh, the oops the score of the uh, the other processor but all right, you know what I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna trust that this is doing its job. All right, one more try. Looks like the temperatures are holding. No, that's a little bit worse. I'll hit some thermal throttling right there at the very end. Um, so, you know, what we're getting here is kind of what we had initially wanted to, um, you know, without any fiddling with ice buckets and voltages. Um, a score in the high 3700s. Uh, we just did a 3770 and a 3756. Uh, still haven't beat the 3777 that the uh, 9980 was able to do. Um, I mean, the main difference being that that was a score that it hit without any fiddling. Um, you know, we, we, we just plugged in the processor and hit go. Uh, another thing to note is that that score with the 9980 was achieved with, with XMP on. Um, in order to uh, get the scores we're getting right now, in order to, to survive through the run, we had to turn XMP off. Uh, because that extra power to the RAM is actually like pumping the CPU temperature up a tiny bit. 37.65. Well, anyways, we weren't able to beat our score, uh, but we were able to get pretty close. You know, we can pretty comfortably say that they, the, the two CPUs are on par with each other. The major issue here is, of course, you can see this, like, you know, just to achieve the same rendering score as the 9980XE, uh, we've had to dunk our radiator in ice, you know, we've run through a, a few BIOS customizations, we had to turn XMP off. Uh, those are all things that, not something you may want to do, 
you know. In the meantime, you know, we didn't spend the whole time just running Cinebench. We did try a bunch of other uh, pieces of software. Prime 95 has some interesting throttling going on. I'm not sure if, if it has to do with some of the other settings we enabled on the board, but it won't turbo up to full five gigahertz. So we weren't able to get a thermal result that way. If we run an Intel's built-in stress test, the CPU seems to hold up fine. It'll get up into the 90s. Uh, with a sustained run, but not, um, you know, it's not hitting, it's not hitting 100 like we were seeing uh, here. Gaming-wise, we did run our gaming tests. We had Overwatch and CS:GO. Overwatch, uh, 9980 XE, 143 frames per second. 9990 XE, 145. 9900K, 149. Overwatch not being particularly CPU dependent. Roughly the same results there. Streaming with OBS, Overwatch results were pretty flat. A drop of a few frames, 137 on the 9980XE, 139 on the 9990XE, and then maintained uh, 146 on the 9900K. For CSGO, which is a much more uh, sensitive to CPU load, 382 frames per second in the for the 9980XE, uh, 445 for the 9990, and 435 uh, for the 9900K. Um, but again, run to run variance about 10 frames per second. So the 9990 and 9900K, uh, roughly equivalent there. When we turned on OBS though, we saw a drop of 363 frames on the 9980, uh, 388 on the 9990, and 333 on the 9900K. So in terms of streaming performance, you do take a little bit of a hit on the 9900K, despite, again, being hailed as the best gaming processor. Uh, if you're gaming and recording, and this is just gaming and recording, we're not doing anything else in the background, we don't have any uh, Discord or vo any other voice programs, um, you know, there's no browsers open, it's just the game and OBS recording. Um, you could see an even bigger impact potentially uh, if you like to multitask. And I know that most gamers aren't going to be, you know, so specific that they're going to close every single other piece of software running on their computer. I know I don't. You know, maybe this thing really was just made uh, for for those uh, whatever banks and, and traders. And the gaming workloads we threw at this thing, like no real concerns on temperature and power usage. Sure, it was a lot higher than a lot of other CPUs, but it, it wasn't bad. There was no cause for concern. I guess the real problem uh, that we're dealing with here is, you know, okay, assuming you can buy this thing again next time it comes around for $2,000, $2,200, it's still more expensive than the 9980. And if you're the type of person who has the know-how uh, to go into BIOS, make these kinds of changes, if you know how to do that, um, you can actually tune your 9980XC to behave similarly. You can give it a, uh, a 50x multiplier in lightly threaded workloads. Um, we were able to pretty easily get left, like the first four cores up to five gigahertz, no problem. Um, and you know, as far as an all-core overclock, again, even with these same boards, we can get to 4.3, 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz all-core on the 18-core processor which would give us uh, a Cinebench score. I think we hit 45 or 4,600 at some point. So in terms of rendering, um, let's actually see. I don't, one second. God, this calculator is huge. 22% better performance, um, and we still weren't hitting that super high power threshold of uh, around 400 watts. Maybe with a good cooler like this, not the ice bucket, that's something you can keep up, you know, all day uh, and not have to worry about it. Uh, we came into this, this video project hoping to give a recommendation of, hey, this is a super exclusive CPU. You know, it's a secret, it's, it's for everyone. It's the best CPU for every usage, uh, for gamers, for content creators, again, these these financial institutions, whoever's like they were originally intended for, and say, hey, we got this CPU. You know, you wanna be one of these exclusive, you know, exclusive people that could even have this. But we kind of walk away, you know, a little disappointed. Um, you know, it wasn't as amazing as, as we wanted it to be. Um, and then another thing to keep in mind is, assuming someone does figure out a good workload for this CPU, again, it, it was purchased at an auction, so the price is based on demand. Uh, you may end up paying four, five, six thousand dollars for this CPU, who knows? Uh, and then, you know, then it's, it really doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, you know, a, a product is only as good as, as the worst one, and you know, I really hope in that, that that's the case, that we got, we got the bad egg, um, you know, that with even, they call it the silicon lottery, like we're, we're picking from the top bins of the silicon lottery, but we could have still gotten, you know, 
the bottom row of, of that. Maybe there's some of these ones out there that are so good they'll even overclock. We're not able to do that on ours. Well, that was a crazy last few days. I guess if you found this interesting, if you learned something new, if we missed something, uh, let us know. If you want us to do more testing with this processor to explore stuff that maybe we didn't touch on, uh, again, let us know in the comments. Hit us up on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, you know, we want to keep doing videos like this. Um, but uh, yeah, until next time, uh, I'm Brad from iBuyPower, and uh, thanks for watching. And cut. <sighs> And I really need a coffee. <sighs>